for all of these teachings, there is more in-depth revelation information on them, both in the book, The Seven Mountain Prophecy, and in the second book, The Seven Mountain Mantle, really goes into prophetic seeing and declaring of what will be taking place in the coming years. And uh, I strongly recommend uh, either one, both of those books, particularly if you are planning on making a significant difference. If you're ready to be a weapon of mass deliverance, then uh, you want to go equipped with as much faith, hope, love, power, presence, understanding as possible. And there really is a practical application to all these things. There are uh, prayer steps and there are action steps, but this is where the kingdom of God touches planet Earth. And it is meant to be uh, not just ethereal and us get excited. Yes, the kingdom's coming and the glory is going to fill the earth, but how his glory is going to fill the earth. There is a glory in a very nuanced way, specific and real way, on each one of these areas of society. And the mountain of education... Again, very important. Uh, I remember when I was first teaching through each one of these mountains, it, 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 it struck me. Every mountain I began to teach from, it seemed like to me it was the most important mountain. And a case can be made for every single one of the mountains as we go through. You know, government, it's all about government. The way government goes, the whole nation goes. And you go, oh, well, money. He who, you know, money rules. Follow the money trail. So you can make a point a case for each one, and it, you know, eventually it really is sort of like trying to determine in your own body uh, which is more valuable, your brain, your liver, your heart, and it's, you know, they're just seven aspects of who God is that have to be restored in a proper way in society. So the mountain of education, we want to go again into understanding the spiritual landscape. The enemy on this mountain is the Amorite. We're connecting one of the enemy nations of the promised land, those that were called to be dispossessed. And this one's the Amorite. And Amorite means to think or act high-mindedly. The specific definition of the name Amorite is something different than that. But we, uh, that'll be all you need to get from here. You can get the more nuanced details in the books. But it represents humanism. So that becomes, again, the lie that the enemy is advancing. That becomes his... Uh, his operational tactic and also the demons that he's using. The principality is Beelzebub, working in conjunction with the prince of Greece. Beelzebub means Lord of the Flies. That's what his name literally does mean. We could say Lord of the Lies. And he sells subtle lies. He manifested first, we could say, in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He comes to the mind of reason and begins to tell us to challenge the mind of God. Hath God said? This becomes the principalities, the principality and the operational spirits behind it that are behind humanistic thinking, the mind of reason, even critical thinking. Again, I'm going to challenge uh, this becomes a challenge even for believers who, who many do, you know, you've been instructed, you've been raised and discipled in this system. And so we have been trained to believe that critical thinking is the highest level of thinking there is. Weigh the pros and cons, it's how you go around. But that weighing pros and cons is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Pros and cons, critical thinking. What he was offering was a tree of life where you just get instruction. Man shall not live by bread alone. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And he'll tell you sometimes things that are counterproductive, uh, counterintuitive, and sometimes they may be intuitive. But the wisdom that comes from above is very different than the wisdom that we determine based on pros and cons. Just imagine, for instance, the children of Israel operating out of the mind of pros and cons, critical thinking, wisdom, that type of wisdom, what we call wisdom. You come to the Red Sea, and the Lord says, you can cross. It's like, wait a minute. Pros and cons here. I don't think so. Hey, well, raise a stick and it's going to happen. Uh, okay, raise a stick. You, a stick goes up, water parts. There's no connection. There, there, logically, no, does not compute, not going to happen. So, and then uh, a manna from heaven, water from the rock, 
Uh, they said they went 40 years and, and, their, and their sandals never wore out, their clothes never wore out. Everything about the life, the way the Hebraic people advanced, advanced, they advanced under the wisdom of God. The taking of the promised land, when they finally crossed the River Jordan, and, and they're going to Jericho, the first city nation they're taking. You have, again, if you go by the mind of reason, you figure out, you know, you develop some explosive. Apparently, they couldn't do that back then. You figure out how to dynamite the walls. You have these thick walls. Okay, we got to dynamite the walls or figure out how to dig under the walls. No. Wisdom from the tree of life is, let's march around the city seven times. Be quiet so you don't speak mind of reason stuff and doubt. And then all of a sudden, you're done doing that. Ah, shofar, and the walls go down. Everything supernatural that takes place in the life of Israel and then through the scriptures is a counterintuitive. The wisdom from above comes in a counterintuitive way. It's wisdom, it's just not ours. Jesus heals the blind man. What does he do to do that? He spits on dirt and sticks dirt in his eyes. And the people, the Greek philosopher, you know, he was a very, uh, the culture he was, grew up in and birthed and raised, it was the mind of reason to the nth. And they're like, what? At least wash his eyes if you're going to heal him. What's the idea of spit and dirt? And then when the guy can see, everybody goes, maybe spit and dirt's okay. You know, <laughs> and feeding 5,000, five loaves and two fishes. Just keep tearing it, tearing it, tearing it. So we want to understand that. I'm just going after this thing, the idea you may have that real wisdom is critical thinking wisdom. I'm telling you it's the basis, lowest wisdom there is. There's some value to it, but it's low. Real stuff doesn't come that way. All right. Back to specifically, I point out the, word geo, the world geographical mountaintop is not Boston. Every one of these, we haven't been pointing it out, but there is a world geographical mountaintop, the this, this central altar for each one of these uh, uh, mountains of society. We are right by Hollywood. That would be for the mountain of celebration, which we'll get into tomorrow of arts and entertainment. That is the chief world altar right now. It's Hollywood. For finances, economy, New York. Government, Washington, D.C., Education, Boston. We have a bunch of these. Most of them, all of them are in our nation except for one. That's Jerusalem, which is the mountain of religion, which we'll get to also. And so there is there's an understanding that we're not really even going into even as it relates to the, the geographical places because if the sons and daughters of the king were wise, they would invade those cities and bring the kingdom of God there. And just the geographical infusion of sons and daughters of the king being there bringing light would begin to change uh, if you understand, you take the head, everything else begins to follow. You will be the head, not the tail, when you invade the head. And we have to do that geographically also. Okay. Definition of education. The knowledge or skill obtained or developed by a learning process. The original intent of education was training and admonition in the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 1, 7 says the beginning of knowledge. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It's how it begins. The original purpose of education was instruction on how God fits into our worldview. The premise of education, the original premise of education, is that God is the center of the universe and we must orbit around who he is and what he requires. This was the very first educators in our nation, and the influence went throughout the world also. This was why the concept of schooling and education was even formed, was our sons and daughters need to understand that God is the center of the universe, and they better learn how to work around what he expects and demands and requires of us, the fear of the Lord's beginning of wisdom. Humanism says the opposite of that. Humanism says, you're the center of the world, and if God exists... He's, you know, he's orbiting around you. If he exists, and he probably doesn't exist. The first public school in America was formed by John Cotton, who was a noted Puritan minister. Many Americans do not even understand the roots of our educational system. The very first public school formed by a minister. With that specific premise instruct our children 
in the knowledge and fear of the Lord. Harvard, William and Mary, Yale, and Princeton are the four oldest learning institutions in our nation. <clears throat> Howard University in 1636 was founded by clergyman John Harvard. William and Mary in 1693 was founded as an Anglican institution. Yale University in 1701 by 10 Congregationalist ministers. Princeton University in 1746 by Presbyterians. The motto, under God she flourishes. I don't even have to advance anymore and you can recognize that our educational system has been totally hijacked from its original intention. And it has been hijacked again by these spirits, the mind of reason. It's by Beelzebub, the Lord of the lies, Lord of the flies. Back to that point, the Lord of the lies, Lord of the flies. Flies come on something that's rotten. And he's the Lord of the flies because he's serving rotten food. But he's made it look good. And so we think, oh, mind of reason. Critical thinking, that's high-level thinking. And so he's selling that to us, and we're eating that as if it were some tasty filet mignon and getting sick, and flies around it are, it should be the dead giveaway. But we can't see them, of course. Okay, back to these universities. Harvard, William & Mary, Yale University, Princeton University. Speaking of the professors of them, 72% are self-described liberals. 15% describe themselves as conservatives. Well, this is overall our, uh, of our educational our colleges. In the elite schools of Harvard and these other ones, the liberals are 87%. Now, this is not really to make a political statement of liberals versus conservatives. There is as it relates to educational liberalism and conservatism that we're talking about because it's speaking of social issues. Liberal education is either specifically or, in effect, atheistic or agnostic. Again, I'm just telling you some things straightforwardly, and, and because of our, our time constraints and restraints, we're not developing it deeper, and you can get more of this in the, in, in the books. And I'm just telling you uh, some things just as an eye-opener so you understand where we were and where we've gone, and that gives you some idea of how we have to change. Liberal education is that which is brought on to isms, humanism and rationalism. Humanism is an ethical philosophy that prioritizes universal human qualities and intellect. Humanism, an ethical philosophy that prioritizes universal human qualities and intellect. Again, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Hath God said, he's holding back from you. He knows if you eat of this. If you have the right to be the second guesser to determine if things are right or wrong and all that kind of way, then you will be like God. And they were sent out of the garden for that. Rationalism. Rationalism rejects the validity of transcendental justifications such as dependence on faith, the supernatural, or divinely revealed truths. Both are sourced by Greek philosophical thought. Again, that's the prince of Greece. We're understanding the spiritual landscape of this mountain. Those called to the mountain of education, one of the reasons it's tough right now, even for believers to make a difference, is because most believers, most believing professors that are Christians, have been trained and discipled under these concepts, and so they themselves are driven by mind of reason motors. And look into how our children are being educated. Five isms. This is, we mentioned two of them, we give another little description. Humanism, basically, you shorten it, man is God. That's basically what it's saying. Number two, rationalism, that there is no supernatural. Again, it wars against God. The lies of the enemy in the mountain of education are all lies determined to tear down knowledge of God. 
And they come, to, you know, they have sophisticated manifestations. But in humanism, man is God. In rationalism, there is no God. Supernatural, there's no supernatural, therefore no God. In liberalism, freedom supersedes morality. It's freedom from God instead of freedom from God, you know, liberty that he gives us. We're free to be from God, from his constraints, from his laws, from his rules, his ordinance, his regulations. So that's what liberalism becomes. Do what you feel like doing is what liberalism comes to be, to manifest. For those to understand what core Satanism is, even the Satanic Bible, the motto of the Satanist Bible is, do as thou wilt. That's just core Satanism. Do what you feel like doing. That something is justified as right because you feel like you want to do it. Remember, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you lose the fear of the Lord, it's the end of foolishness. Number four, agnosticism. That ultimate reality is unknown or unknowable. God probably doesn't exist, and if he does, you can't know him anyway. Again, every one of them is conspiring against God. Every one of the isms conspires against God. You can study and research this more on your own. And you'll just, there's all kinds of insidious and tricky ways it comes in and is manifested. But all these isms, in one way or the other, they conspire against God and the knowledge of God. Then atheism is where they don't hide anymore. It's the disbelief in God directly. He for sure doesn't exist. So there's, again, he probably doesn't exist. Well, if he does, we don't want any of his rules. Uh, there's no supernatural. Uh, there, and, you know, ultimately, we're supposed to be, we're, we're, we're our own sources and we're, we're our own brain power. We're the ones that are really God. Now, one of the key things to understand uh, on the mountain of education is, it is amazing, the enemy on each one of these mountains, again, I'll state again, he really has such a simple plan, a simple lie. He pushes. He, he can get sophisticated in how he does it, but it, it ultimately is just a simple thing. It's a simple distortion of the face of God, of who God is. And one of the ways he does it, and it's part of this prince of Greece, mind of reason, rationalism, is that he gets us operating out of our left brain. The left side of our brain. And that being our foundation for how we think and how we project ourselves and how we determine even who's smart and who's not smart and how we, uh, you know, our scoring systems, ACT, SAT, they're about rewarding those who are strong in their left brain. Now, you're saying, what are you talking about left brain? Well, you literally have two processors, your left side and your right side. Your left brain, the way it functions, this part of your, this part of your brain, is verbal, analytical, sequential, rational, objective. It's good at observing. That's how this part of your brain works. Your bright brain is visual, creative, intuitive, organic, experiential and is good at participating. So you want to access creative things, it's coming from the right side, your right brain, your right processor processor. Literally they're both your brains and you need them both. <laughs> so we're not saying get rid of your left side of your brain. But we'll call it left brainism in this limited uh, 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 um, teaching on it. Prince of Greece thinking is equals left brainism. It's where you're dominated by your left brain. That that's your foundation for truth. Again, that's where the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the tree you resort to. Critical thinking, pros and cons. It dominates. It's not just exists there, it's what dominates. Kingdom of God thinking is right brainism. We could take the time to, to explain, and I'll just do it briefly because we have a, a little bit of time to do this. When Jesus came, it's what he kept announcing everywhere. Again, he came into the most uh, uh, indoctrinated in Greek thought um, 
society imaginable. And he came, first of all, John the Baptist comes before him and he would say, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Y'all remember that? He would say, repent, and he would say, Jesus is coming. Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. And everybody, oh yeah, say sorry, repent of your sins, you know, stop doing that. But that word repent, metaneo, means literally to change the way you think. It means to do an about face. Metaneo. Then Jesus came, this is Jesus came and says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And if we understand even this principle of right brain and left brain, not just the principle, the reality, he was coming to a left brain society where the, everything was used on critical thinking and things happening. You know, one plus one is two. Two plus two is four. There is a logic to it. and It's, it, it has, it's a lower level intelligence. But the intelligence from above is better. You know, in, 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 in the left brain, it's a one and one is two. In right brain intelligence, one and one, 10,000. You know, one puts 1,000 to flight, two puts 10,000. See, so John was saying, listen, the guy that's about to come and preach to you, you better change the way you think. You better go from being dominated by this side. You better switch over to this because you're not going to get him at all. He is going to be counterintuitive. He's going to be counter your intelligent, his intelligence. He's going to be counter the mind of reason in every conceivable way you can think of. Number one, when he makes his points, he's not going to draw it up on a chalkboard and say, here's point number one, number two, number three. He's going, to do, he's going to tell you stories the whole time. The kingdom of God is like a treasure hidden in the field. The kingdom of, you know, all these things like people are still, what? He intentionally was communicating to the right brain, the right processor. Your right brain is what has access to the spirit realm. When you have faith, faith is the substance. You cannot get it from this side. You can remember, you can memorize every scripture in the Bible on faith. And if you have it all just right here memorized, you have no faith. Because it's a substance you access. You want peace that passes understanding? We can test, do a test right now. You want to get a little more peace right now? Watch this. Put your hand on your right side of your brain. Peace come to you now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> You're getting the joy that comes with peace. See, it's really powerful. Even Sigmund Freud... He, under, he did tests, and he found that depending where he was touching people, they would respond one way or the other. When I minister to people, and I get, I'm starting to get tired, I've prophesied over too many people, and I go, oh, no, I have nothing for them. I literally, if I can be subtle about it, I'll just touch. It's remind myself. You really can activate by just, it's like I'm not going to my brain. I'm not going to my computer. I'm going to where I have a chimney to the supernatural. See, this side only spits back to you what you put in it. It's your computer. This side is open to the spirit realm. So the simple plan of the devil is, let's create a system, an educational system, where we stuff them into the left side. And they have no access to God. Then we, in all the stuff to the left side, there are all the isms that deny God. And so then you wonder why you have a humanistic culture. And it's known that children... At age five, 90% of children operate primarily out of the right side of the brain. That's why they do crazy things. They'll experiment. They'll believe they can fly. They can do all kinds of things. <laughs> Within one year of schooling, 50% of them will now be to the left. Subsequently, from then on, for every year there's school, they're further and further to the left. You get a, a doctorate, you got like horns coming out this side. <laughs> It's hard to believe. But, but you've been indoctrinated how not to believe. And so Jesus comes, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. And then he does these, all these things that he's like, I'm going to come and, you know, I'm going to heal a blind man by putting dirt in his eye. I'm going to feed 5,000 by breaking five loaves and two fishes. I'm going to walk on water. I'm going to do everything that you think is backwards. I'm going to raise up as my apostles, my spokesman. I'm the king of the universe. And I'm going to call up 12 rednecks who can't preach and they're just messed up and they're going to carry my kingdom. Everything about him was just counter to the way sophisticated society operated. Sophistication and the mind of reason are all in the same thing there. That's why it says, foolishness of God is wiser than men. He has chosen the foolish, the base things of this world to confound the wisdom of this world. It's not just that he uses it, he prefers it. When he chose the donkey, he chose the donkey. You remember the entry, triumphal entry into Jerusalem? 
It wasn't like, oh, dang, there's no horse here. Where's the white lion? I'm the king of kings. He says, disciples, there's a donkey in the village across from us. Loose him and say, the master has need of him. What's he doing coming on the back of the donkey? That's why he says, repent. Change the way you think. You're not going to get me. I'm coming in an entirely different logic. I'm the logic of the tree of life. Tree of life logic is obey and supernatural things happen. See? Okay. So what do we need on the mountain of education? Well, we understand the Lord's provided the mantle of teacher, the anointing of teacher. You could be called, you've been, you know, prophesied over you, spoken, you're called to be a teacher. Maybe it's not in the household of God. Maybe it is on this mountain. There's also a place for pastors. There's a great overlap with the family mountain, with the mountain of education. There's a lot of overlaps. Different mountains overlap more than others. There's great overlapping between the family mountain and the mountain of education. So we need teachers. We need lovers of children. Pastors as principals. Maybe you're called to be a pastor and it's not, again, in the household of God specifically, maybe you're called to pastor school as a principal. Again, we got to get out of this one mountain. We all got to try to pile up on this one mountain while six mountains under darkness. You wonder, want to know why the mountain of education was hijacked? Because we're just trying to get people saved on the mountain of religion. And the enemy just keeps saying, hey, they're not paying attention. Let's take this, let's take this, let's take this. We got to stop that. We need curriculum writers. New curriculum, just one aspect of it is curriculum that is more connected to the right brain being activated. They, they know this. This is actually taking place right now. You know our educational system is an absolute crisis. 40% of teenagers are not, playing, are not finishing school anymore. They're bored with it. So we have a generation that's wired. They want to do three things at the same time. They're creative. You know, they're texting, Facebooking, and listening. And my, my daughter's... It's crazy. They said, Dad, when you're preaching, do you mind if we can, we can, can we do Facebook and our computer at the same time? It's hard to listen to you unless we're doing something else at the same time. I'm like, what? <laughs> if we're not doing two or three things at the same time, it's hard to concentrate. It's like, this is a, and so they, you give them these, you know, boring left brain. See, left brainism is boring, number one. It's just, you can't even feel once you live off that. That's why you get off that, then you have to go do alcohol, drugs, run to the movies. You gotta get something, get some life. The only place you can feel from is from through your right brain. So societies that are dominated by the mind, the reason they're just, they're dying on the vine. So they have to go do something either sinful or, or at least some kind of entertainment just to get some life and juice into them. And so this generation is like, we're done with this stuff. I want to go watch supernatural movies, do supernatural videos. They want supernatural stuff. They have an insatiable appetite for the supernatural. And some of it is distorted. But if we don't give them the real, they're going to go for the raw. At some point, we're going to begin to manifest the real kingdom of God, which is supernatural. So we need curriculum writers, financiers of new school models, charter schools, janitors, coaches, art instructors, tutors, intercessors, etc., etc., Privilege, you know, it's exciting for me to tell you I'm in touch with educators, one of the top educators of South America, one that writes curriculum in our nation, people who've been reading the Seven Mountain, and they've just been daring. She said, I read what you said. I'm like, okay, Lord, use me. And the Lord's taking them to amazing places where they're now starting to write national curriculum and change things, and, and I can't tell too much of it. And there's, but there's all kinds of possibilities. If we would just arise, light overtakes darkness. You know, it's not like it's a mano a mano, see if we can do it. If light knows who light is and begins to shine and connects with other light, darkness starts backing off in a hurry. Our side is bigger, greater, greater angels, greater God, greater everything. We just got to get connected to our mission in a better way. We need this mountain full of teachers and pastors, a different type of teachers and pastors. We need those, again, receiving downloads of God. The new, I believe there's going to be new charter schools, new test schools. You know, the way this thing, this thing works and the way education works, because the systems are now being shaken, 
He shakes everything that can be shaken so the new can come in. And he can showcase himself as a desire of the nations. At this time when the system is being shaken is a time for the sons and daughters of the king to manifest a testing. And one school, one school, one city region or one, one school even say, hey, this is what we started doing here. And they go, wow. And the kids love it. The kids love it. See, he is the desire of the nations. And so even proper education, when it's presented in a proper way, is more exciting. Learning is really fun for kids when it's done right. And so, uh, you know, when you're not just stuffing and, and hurting their brain with, I don't want to say trigonometry, but, you know, there's, there's an excess of math. How much, oh, I'm going to get in trouble if I go there. There is high math that's, you know, if you're in the space program, you need it. But do we really need to make all our kids hurt their brains with high-level math? How many of you have used it? You know, I'm just, uh, I'm not talking about basic stuff. And I know I can step on some toes, but you get into that high-level stuff. It's like we're doing all that. We have a whole lot of our educational stuff. It just hurts the brain, no practical use. And somebody's got to be honest enough and admit that. You know, and okay, if you're going to be in the certain program and space agency and whatever, you need that. Okay, you know, some people need to know how to do pig farming, but do we need to teach everybody how to farm pigs? <laughs> All right. I did so good and so fast with that. I have time to pray with you all. This is important even for those watching on video because we're going to do something in just a moment. We're going to pray an activation of your right brain. And I'm telling you, this changes everything. This changes, it, it's, an edu it's from the mountain of education principle. This, is a, this changed my whole life ministerially accessing the kingdom, the power of God. When you know that, when you stop going to this side and going to your computer and to your logic to try to access whether it's words, healing, or whatever, it's a, you, the freedom, just lean on the spirit and go that way. I went to uh, Lima, Peru, I'll tell you this one. I was at a theological seminary. I think it was about 100 students there. I came and taught them on the mountain of education and about the left brain, the right brain, the whole thing. And I told them, the deal is our seminaries, they're Christian, but seminaries, they're trained in the same mind of reason stuff. That's why we have problems. You, have, you get trained uh, uh, mind of reason domination, so you have pastors being spit out that come out of there, and we wonder why. Well, we have no power and presence in our church. We have people, again, if the enemy pushes you into a corner on the left side, you need to repent, change, metaneo, change to the other side, access where you can get the chimney to the supernatural realm, and then connect it to the Holy Spirit. And so we were done, and I had them stand up, and we went through the exercise we're going to do where we switch literally and go over uh, to the right, and it was amazing. The power of God invaded that place, and, and, and I don't want to be uh, uh, telling you things. I want to be planting thoughts in you that you have to act in this, in this way. There it might have been more powerful than it would, would be here, but the, super, the supernatural dimension of God came into that seminary, and they were just a mess all over the place. And, and it was just because they went from left to right and invited the Holy Spirit in. And so this, 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 is, a, this is a major key of life, actually, because every one of us, you, your education has discipled you into being stuck in the left brain, to be stuck eating fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And there, again, there's some wisdom there. There's some pros and cons. There's a time for that. But really what we always want is a mind of God. The wisdom that is from above just comes straight forward. He says something, let's do it. You know, Abraham left not knowing where he was going. Lord says, Abraham, leave. He obeyed, and so he's the father of faith. The Lord says, I'm going to bless you forever and ever and ever because it didn't need to make sense. You just obeyed me. And so I'm going to bless Israel, the nations, everything because of that. Stand with me, please. Okay, I should. How many of you, if you... Uh, feel like you are you already know you're called to the mountain of education or you feel like you are just raise your right hand I want to uh, just hold that up for just a moment I want to pray for you real briefly first Lord these with their hands raised these watching by video that are raising their hands that are already on the mountain of education I ask for fresh anointing to come upon their life even right now Lord 
fresh anointing, fresh ideas, begin to invade their sleep, their dreams with new ideas. During the day, daydreams, new, just dangerous thought, radical thoughts, help them get together and be think of, of new possibilities for schools, curriculum, any kind of way that you can manifest your kingdom and this face of your wisdom upon them. We thank you for that, Lord. Okay, you can put your hands down now. All right, here's what we're going to do if you're willing to do so. We're going to uh, help you operate in the supernatural realm. And the way we're going to do, I'm going to ask you first to put your right hand over your left brain processor, which is your mind, your reason. That's the stuff that's just boring. It helps you. There's, you know... It's, the left brain is to tell, like, it helps me. You want to the left brain helps me? You got three minutes to go. You know, it, it tells, it's, 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 it's supposed to be your maid. It tells you how much time you got to go. It gives you parameters of operation, but it does not access the supernatural. And so it's, it's supposed to be, you know, your, your maid servant, your servant in the household that, that helps you with that. But when you make it the dominant thing, then you just lose all the power of life that he has for us. Okay, close your eyes. What we're going to do, so you're not in disagreement, we're going to ask the left brain to begin to bow to what's in the right brain. So, if you're in agreement with that, say, left brain, I give you instruction to lessen your influence in my life. I thank you for your service to me. But you may no longer be in charge. I'm doing a metaneo. I'm repenting. I'm going to the right side. Now go to the right side, touch your other side. <laughs> Did you feel the whole atmosphere of the room change just by doing that? Say, right brain. right brain, I give you permission to increase your influence and authority. And now I'm just going to pray for you. You don't have to repeat this part. Keep your hand there. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come sweep in through the right brain. I thank you the things of the Spirit are accessed by going to the right. I thank you we can partake of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace. <laughs> Whoa. Shoo. Spirit realm, be activated, be opened up. Joy. <laughs> Come in. Peace. Come in. More. More. This is just a test and experience. You can keep doing this. This is how you train your right brain to be more activated even. Just stay there. though; It'll keep getting stronger. I'll tell you, in closing, the scripture, you can look it up. I think it's John 21. If you remember, the disciples, they went fishing. Peter was leading them. They fished all night. They catch nothing. They could catch nothing. You remember that scripture? Jesus comes up to them. I don't know if you know what he said, though. He said, cast your nets to the right. And Peter was offended, like, I'm the expert fisherman. What are you talking about? My boat's probably, we've been all over this lake. I'm sure I hit that water already. He says, I don't care. Cast it to the right. Metaneo. He cast to the right. And then Peter was, oh, my goodness. They had all these large, huge fish. They were about to sink trying to pull up the fish. And he says, oh, forgive me, Lord. 
I forgot that you wanted to access the supernatural, but that even in that, in his, in his presence, the scripture says, pleasures untold, at his right hand, in his, in his presence is fullness of joy, at his right hand, pleasures untold. There's some, we can go into several things with the right. This is a thing, if you can't feel the peace of God, you're just dry as can be, you just pray and say, oh Lord, release your kingdom to me. I go to the right, I throw my net to the right, I want to catch you. It's how you begin to feel the kingdom. It's how you begin to feel faith, hope, peace. <laughs> That's why we want to have a generation that begins to be raised up, used to going to the right. It'll make them closer to having an encounter with the Lord, with the supernatural. We want to undo what the enemy has tried to do is raise up a whole generation and generations and stuff them into the left. <laughs> a little bit more, Holy Spirit, a little bit more. A little bit more. They've been here a long time. Come in, Holy Spirit, with more. Release the kingdom, release the kingdom. And I speak in activation of the prophetic gifting, recognize, the recognition of the voice of God, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, all the prophetic, revelation, spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of God. I believe the Lord's even freeing and has freed some of you who've been suffering from migraines. One of the causes of migraines is being stuck too much in the left and trying to figure it out there. So in the name of Jesus, you're set free from your migraines, your headaches. Even now, go, be free from that in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.